Okay, time to talk about spiral compounds. Spiral compounds are those who only have a single bridge head. And they have uh, a resemblance to the bicycloalkanes. But as you will see pretty soon, there are some major differences in the way in which we name such compounds. Now, um, what you still do is count what's to the left and to the right of that bridge head, right? So you have two carbons to the left, two carbons to the right. So you input those numbers, 2.2 .2 inside the brackets, you precede it by the word spiro. And if you add these two numbers together, plus the one bridge head, so 2 plus 2 plus 1, that tells you that you have five carbons total, so this is spiropentane. Now, when you do have spiral compounds with different size rings, what ends up happening is that instead of doing what we did for bicycloalkanes, we're going to do the opposite. We're actually going to go in ascending order uh, for the number of carbons. So notice that on this left side of the bridgehead, we have two carbons. On the right side, we have three. So instead of saying spiral 3.2, which is in descending order, we're going to do the opposite. We're going to go in ascending order. So spiral 2.3. Two plus three is five, plus one is six. So this is spiral hexane. All right, same idea here. You have five carbons on the left side. You have four carbons on the right side. So this is spiral 4.5. And if you add the 4 and the 5 together, plus one more, that gives you 10. So this is spirodecane. Another example right here, we have a total of 7 carbons on the left side. We have 3 carbons on the right side. So this is spiral 3.7. 3 plus 7 is 10, plus 1 is 11. So this is spirounddecane. In the last example, we have a total of 5 carbons on the left side. We have a total of... 6 on the right side, so this is spiral 5.6. 5, 5 plus 6 is 11. 11 plus 1 is 12, so this is spiral dodecane. All right, so aside from changing the order of the numbers inside the brackets, another thing that changes as well is the numbering scheme for the bicyclos. Um, because unlike bicycloalkanes, where you started with a bridgehead and that was your carbon 1, here you actually label the carbon next to the bridgehead as carbon one. And not only is it the carbon next to the bridgehead, it has to be the carbon on the smallest ring. So looking at each one of those um, molecules, number one is always next to the bridgehead, next to the bridgehead, next to the bridgehead, next to the bridgehead, and next to the bridgehead. And notice that for the spiral compounds that have different size rings on either side, we're always numbering carbon number one on the smallest ring, right? So this is the three member ring versus the four member ring, three member ring gets labeled. Six member ring versus five member ring, five member ring gets labeled. Six member ring versus seven member ring, six member ring gets labeled. And eight member ring versus four member ring, four member ring gets labeled. And it's on the carbon next to the bridgehead. After that, what we do is we continue numbering the small ring, but we do so in such a way that we leave the bridgehead until the end. And what that basically means is that if looking at this molecule, for instance, uh, if we were to label this carbon as two, that will mess the entire thing up because we still have a third one that needs to be labeled and the bridgehead has to be the last one on the count. So we will have to go counterclockwise as far as the numbering goes to reach the bridgehead last. On this example, however, we will have to go counterclockwise to reach the bridgehead last. Over here, we will go clockwise. In this example, we will also go clockwise. And on the last example here, we will go counterclockwise. So we will do that until we reach the bridgehead. We also label the bridgehead um, with the proper number. Now, when we get to this point, what we do is we label, we begin labeling the bigger ring. And we do so in such a way that we kind of follow the same trajectory that the penultimate number and the number of the bridgehead were following. So let's start up here. So notice that from two to three, we're going up and to the left. So we're gonna label the corner, which is up and to the left on the opposite ring. Over here, we go from two to three, 
happen to the right so we're going to label this corner as 4 um, because we're going up and to the right over here from 4 to 5 we're going up and to the left so this corner is going to be the next one to be labeled in this molecule going from 3 to 4 we're going up and to the left so this corner will be the next one to be labeled and over here from 5 to 6 we are going up and to the right so this is the next corner to be labeled so you kind of have this uh, um, almost like infinity sign um, trajectory of how you number all the uh, carbons within these ring systems. Now by the time you get to the big ring you simply follow the same trajectory still until you complete numbering all of the carbons and uh, just remember you're going to stop one short of the bridgehead because the bridgehead has already been labeled. Um, so notice that in the bow tie here on the left and the upper left corner um, we're going up and to the left so we're going to continue going counterclockwise. For this one, we went up and to the right, so we're going to continue going clockwise. Here we went up and to the left, so we go counterclockwise. Here we went up and to the left, we also go counterclockwise. And here we went up and to the right, so we go clockwise. And you simply complete labeling each one of these rings in that fashion. So it is a little bit different than what we did for the bicycloalkane. So you have to be careful not to confuse one with the other, you know, this type of fused rings are <laughs> um, a different beast altogether. All right, so let's give you an example involving substituents. Uh, first things first, we recognize that this is spiral compound because we have two fused rings sharing one bridge head. Uh, we have four carbons on the left side and two carbons on the right side. So we have to label this in ascending numerical order. So this will be spiral 2.4 in brackets. Uh, 2 plus 4 is 6 plus 1 more is 7 so this is spiral 2.4 heptane. Next we determine the names of the substituents and these are two chloro groups um, so as far as naming goes we need to call this dichloro in front of spiral heptane and you don't necessarily need the hyphen in here so I just did that to kind of separate a little bit but typically you don't need the hyphen that's only required if you're separating numbers from letters. Okay, now here comes the difficult part. We need to determine the numbers associated with the substituents. And remember, we're going to place carbon number one on the carbon adjacent to the bridgehead on the smallest ring. And we have two possibilities. We could label this carbon or that carbon. So we're going to look at the two, at the two possibilities. Let's start with the one right here. So this is going to be carbon one. It is the smallest ring. It is the carbon next door to the bridgehead. Uh, we're going to go clockwise so that we hit the bridgehead last. So the bridgehead is going to be label number three. Going from two to three, we're going up and to the left. So we have to hit this corner with the next number. So that will be number four. And then we just complete the sequence going, you know, counterclockwise to label the rest of the atoms. Okay, so what we can see here is that the chloro groups are positioned at carbon one and carbon five. So this will be called 1,5 dichloro spiral 2.4 heptane. All right, now to make sure that this is correct, we're gonna check the second option, which is to place this carbon as carbon number one. And once again, we're gonna label the small ring leaving the bridgehead till the end. So we are going counterclockwise in terms of the numbering. And since we're going down and to the left, we have to hit this corner down here with the next number. So this is number four. And after that, we just continue labeling the numbers in that same trajectory. Okay. So now that we got all the numbers in there, we acknowledge that chlorines or the chloro groups are positions uh, carbon six and carbon two. So this will be called 2,6 dichloro spiral 2.4 heptane. Okay. So since the spiral heptanes are just alkanes, it's going to come down to the substituents to determine which name is correct. Um, and we simply compare them. Going from 1 to 2, that's bad because the number went up. Going from 5 to 6, that's also bad because the number went up. So overall, the blue scheme is actually bad, right? It didn't give you any better numbering uh, compared to the red scheme. So what this is telling us is that the red scheme is, in fact, the actual name of this molecule. Okay? 
that concludes the lecture on nomenclature. So in the next lecture, we're going to talk about conformational analysis, torsional strain, and we'll be doing some calculations. So I will see you in the next lecture series. Bye-bye.